So we're going to talk about the split of Israel, and it's a great split, a great split of Israel, okay? This is very important when it comes to understanding the Bible, particularly uh, the New Testament as well, okay? So this is very, very important, and we're just going to touch on some things. Um, this could have been very long, but I, I, I kind of condensed it, okay? So talking about the split of Israel, all right? Um, Brother Kai, be my reader today. So we're going to start on, we have to really know, before you talk about the Israel, you have to realize who, who they are, okay? Uh, we won't go from the beginning, but you can go in Genesis, earlier chapters, go from Adam, you know, it goes down in lineage, you know, Adam and then Noah, you know, the three sons, and then from the line of Shem, you know, you have Abraham, and then it comes to, um, it gets eventually to Jacob. So we're going to start from there, all right? Brother, when you get there, you read it for us. And he said unto him, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince has thou had power with God and with men and has prevailed. So we see there was a man named Jacob, but God, well, the angel came, he, this is the part where he was wrestling the angel, all right? We're not going to get through all that today. But he was wrestling the angel, and he said, you know, he was wrestling, saying, you're going to bless me before you go. And so the angel asked him, what's your name? You know, and he, and he said, it ain't going to be no more Jacob, but now I'm going to call you Israel, okay? So that name from Jacob, we would have been Jacobites. You might hear some people say that, but, you know, it changed from Jacob to now Israel, all right? So let's see what's going to happen to this guy named Israel now. Go to Exodus chapter 1. And then we're going to do one through five. All right. Exodus chapter one and one through five. Right. Brother, whenever you're ready, start. Now, these are the names of the children of Israel, which came into Egypt. Every man in his household came with Jacob, Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, and Benjamin, Dan, and Naphtali, Gad, and Asher, and all the souls that came out of the loins of Jacob were 70 souls, for Jake, for Joseph was in Egypt already. All right, so when they came, remember, Jacob's name was changed to Israel, but he called children of Israel. This is children. Well, this is talking about what? His sons, right? So we got Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, you know, Issachar all the way down, well, they have it kind of out of order, but these are the, the sons, right? Because it goes with the seed, okay? He has some daughters, but it's listing the sons, okay? And Joseph was already in Egypt at this time. So these were, you're going to see these names are very important because they all start being a particular tribe as we move forward, all right? So these are the sons of Israel, the children of Israel, okay? All right, next slide. In Exodus chapter 9 and verse 7. All right. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. So I went here to show what, what did Pharaoh call them? Israelites. That's all it is. It's a family, okay? It's just like you, you know, we kind of lose it, but they'll call, you know, my last name, Pharaoh, would be Pharaohites, you know, my son and all them. So that's what it is. Israelite is from, it's telling you the, the uh, seed or the stock that it came from, okay? These are the people that came from Israel. Not the place, from the man, Jacob, who, who God changed his name to Israel. All right? I want to make sure I get that so I ain't lose nobody with that. Okay? 
So when you go to Israel, how we when we came out, you know, we had Moses, and then you know the priests start happening. We had judges and everything. So we didn't have a king for a long time. All right. Then some things happen. We ain't going to go through that backstory right now, but things have happened. We started getting unfocused with serving God and we start looking at the other nations and we saying, you know what? They have kings. We want kings. Okay. So this started, you know, to happen. So God gave us kings and his anger. He didn't want it like that because he wanted us to realize that he was our true king. But like we said, we look in fleshly. We wanted to be like the heathens and see how they had a king over them. We desired that. So the first king of Israel is Saul, um, and he was from the tribe of Benjamin. So when you go on the list, you're seeing the brothers and everything. Benjamin was one of the 12 brothers. So like I said, they take the name. He's a Benjamite, but he's still what? A, a Israelite, right? Because that's the father. Israelite, but he's from the tribe of Benjamin. It's telling you which brother he came from, all right? Uh, we don't have to read this stuff, but I'm just showing you. If you want to go to 1 Samuel 9, 21 or 10, 1, it shows you where he got ordained uh, to be the king, all right, of Israel. So Saul, a Benjamite, was the first king of Israel, all right? The second one is David. Everybody kind of know about David. David was what? From Judah, the son Judah from Israel. They're both Israelites, but David is from the tribe of Judah. You have to know this stuff when we go forward. It's going to be, um, you understand why I'm doing this. So it went from Benjamite now to Judah, and then Solomon. Solomon was the son of what? David. So he would be what? Judah. He's from the tribe of Judah. But they all were kings of Israel. It's just telling you which, which uh, brother they came from. All right. So all these um, are the kings of Israel. So Israel was under one king. OK, so first king that we ever had was Saul. Then it was David. Then it was Solomon. OK. Now we're going to go to first Kings 11. Now we're just going to do some reading through because you have to go through this chapter. There's no way I could uh, break it up and y'all will have understanding of it. So I have to go through this. Um, and it's going to be right in order, all right? So 1 Kings chapter 11 and verse 11. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, mm -hmm. for as much as this is done of thee, that thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee and will give it to thy servant. So, he gave his statues and his commandments. Remember with Moses, they, Israel had it, right? But because Solomon did not keep him, he said, I'm going to rend the kingdom from you and give it, listen to this, he will give it to thy servant. So somebody that's serving Solomon is going to rend the kingdom from him. Okay. And this happened because, you know, he started messing with idolatry, you know, and doing all these things. So he's breaking these covenants. Okay. So verse 12. Notwithstanding, in thy days, I will not do it for David, thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of thy hand of thy son. So what do he say? I'm not going to do it. In the days, I will not do it. So I'm not going to do it to you, Solomon, during your time. I'm not going to do it to your time not because of respect to you, but because I respected your father. And this is something you got to realize when you want to, when you think about your children and stuff, you have to do this thing to what? Sometimes it falls on your children. So because David was so loyal and loved God, he said, I'm not going to do it to you, Solomon. Okay. I'm not going to do it to you for your father's sake, but I'm going to rend it out of the hands of what? Your son. It's important because God is showing him how he's going to do it. Sometimes you don't always execute judgment right away. Okay. Verse 13. How be it, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but will give one tribe to thy son for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. So I'm not going to take the whole kingdom from you. Remember, he's over all Israel. He said, I'm not going to take all Israel from you, but I'm going to give you one tribe to thy son for David. So I'm going to give you one tribe, and it says, and for Jerusalem's sake, and Jerusalem is very important when it comes to the Bible, because that's where God's saying, 
That's where he hears. That's his land. He chosen Jerusalem out of all the places um, in the world. So he's saying for David's sake, for Jerusalem's sake, I'm going to give you that tribe. All right. Now we go into verse 28 through 31. First Kings still chapter 11, 28 through 31. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor. And Solomon, seeing the young man that he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. So this is Jeroboam, and Solomon appointed him to be um, over the house of Joseph. So that makes him what of Solomon? A servant. Keep this in mind, because remember he told him, a servant is going to rend the kingdom from you. This Bible is 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 perfect. You know, it, it it tells you it lays it right out. Verse twenty nine. And it came to pass mm -hmm. that time when Jeroboam went out of Jerusalem, that the prophet Ahijah, the Shulamite, found him in the way, mm -hmm. and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they too were alone in the field. So we have what. We have Jeroboam, and now we have this prophet, Ahijah, the Shilonite. Okay, so now we got some prophet. Okay, and they were two alone in the field. So they were in the field together. All right, so what happened? Verse 30. And, ah and Ahijah caught the new garment that was on him and ran it into 12 pieces. So now this prophet is ripping this garment into 12 pieces. What, what is he doing? You know, a prophet is supposed to be a messenger of God. What are you getting a message out of ripping something in 12 pieces? Why 12 pieces? Read. And he said to Jeroboam, mm -hmm. take three, take thee ten pieces, and thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. Y'all see it? So the prophet's what? He, he took the ten pieces, he ripped it in total of twelve. He took ten pieces, and he said what? I'm rending, behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon. So he's shown that to say what? I'm taking these 10 tribes. And he said, I will give thee 10 tribes to thee. So the breaking, the ripping the garment in 12 pieces would represent the 12 tribes, the 12 chosen um, Israel. He's taken 10 and he's going to give 10 to this guy, the servant of Solomon called Jeroboam. Okay. So he's giving them 10 pieces to show you're going to get 10 tribes. Okay. Verse 32. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. So he shall have what? One tribe of my servant David's sake, that he, what he told Solomon, right? He told Solomon, you're going to get one tribe, and it's going to be for David's sake and Jerusalem's sake, the same thing. The city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, okay? Verse 34. How be it, I would not take the whole kingdom out of his hand but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David, my servant's sake, whom I chose because he had kept my commandments and my statutes. I'm gonna make him a prince all the days of his life for David's sake, because David was doing what? Keeping his commandments. It's always been about keeping the commandments and the statutes. That's how you stay in the graces of the Lord. Always been that way. Verse 35. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand and will give it unto thee even 10 tribes. See that? I'm going to take it out of his son's hand and give it unto thee, even 10 tribes. So he's telling him, I'm going to give you these 10 tribes. I'm going to take it out of the son's hand. And we're going to see who the son is um, a little later. Verse 36. And unto his son will I give one tribe, mm -hmm. that David, my servant, may have a light away before me in Jerusalem, the city which I had chosen me to put my name there. So I'm going to give his son... I'm going to give him one tribe, right? I'm going, to, I'm going to take the 10, but he's going to have one tribe with him. For David, my servant, may have a light always before me in Jerusalem. So David always have a light with him, all right? So we're going to see who that other tribe is, but we don't know yet, but he's going to have one tribe, all right? I'm going to um, verse 37, jump down to verse 37. And I will take thee. And thou shalt reign according to all that thou so desirest, and shalt be king over Israel. All right, so he said, I'm, you're going to be king over Israel. All right, verse 38. And it shall be, if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and will walk in my ways, and do that which is right in my sight, 
to keep my statutes and my commandments as David, my servant did, that I will be with thee and will build thee a sure house as I built for David and will give Israel unto thee. So he's saying, if you do what? If you do like David did, if you do my statutes and commandments, I'm going to make you a sure house. I'm going to make you a house that ain't going to go nowhere. And this is very important when we move forward. If you do my commandments, I keep, I have you a sure house. A sure house is something that is, is, is stable, is, is solid, is firm. If it ain't sure, what that mean? It's going to be destroyed. Very important when we're dealing with this. So this is to Jeroboam. Because Jer you're going to see the name of Solomon, so it, so it mixes people up. Jeroboam is the servant of Solomon who God is going to make king of Israel to have, what, 10 tribes. He's going to have 10 to himself, okay? This is stuff very important. This is why I'm stressing certain points for a certain reason. Verse 39. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Here go another thing. I'm going to afflict the seed of David. Who is the seed of David? That's Solomon, his kingdom. I'm going to afflict them, but not forever. Another point that's going to be made in the future, okay? Verse 40. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt, and Shishak king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. So we see that Solomon got wind of this, and he desired what? To kill Jeroboam. If you know the story of Saul and David, it's almost the same thing. Saul was trying to kill David when he figured out he's going to be the next king. All right. So Solomon sought to kill Jeroboam. Jeroboam fled into Egypt. All right. So let's go to um, verse 43. Okay. 11 and verse 43. And Solomon slept with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father. And Rehoboam, his son, reigned in his steed. So Solomon dies now. And now his son Rehoboam is, is going to be the king. Okay. So remember, Jeroboam is in Egypt. He fled from Solomon because Solomon was trying to kill him. While he's there, what happened? Solomon dies. And now his son Rehoboam is getting into, you know, the kingship. Okay. Very important. All right. Verse 12. I mean, chapter 12 and verse 1. First Kings chapter 12 and verse 1. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel will come to Shechem to make him king. All right, so Rehoboam now is going to Shechem, and Israel's going to make him king, right? His father died. He's the son, the prince. Now it's time for him to um, take over the throne. Okay, verse 2. And it came to pass, when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, he was fled from the presence of the king of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. I was still telling you what happened. Jeroboam's in Egypt because, remember, he was fleeing from Solomon. Verse 3. That they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying. Okay, so now they, um, this is Jeroboam. He's calling on Israel because, what, he's about to be when he came, right? So. They're getting together. Jump down to verse four. And I'm only jumping because we'll be here forever if I read the whole thing. All right. So jump down verse four, read verse four. Thy father made our yoke grievous. Now, therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. Read. And he said unto them, depart yet for three days, then come again to me. And the people departed. So when you understand Solomon, he was, you know, he was very wealthy, you know, he's a lot of wealth. But what he did was he loved a lot of strange women. And what showed the manifestation of his love for him, he was building temples and idols and things for them. I don't know if y'all know about sanctuaries and temples. You can look at some of them. They cost money, don't they? So who was forking this bill? Nation. Okay. So... <laughs> You got the people, they're like, you know, they're coming to the to the son, like, listen, um, you know, your, your father was a very hard taskmaster. He put a heavy yoke up, upon us. We had to do some hard work. Um, if you make it lighter for us, we'll serve you. That sound, you know, that sound reasonable, right? 
your father worked this hard. You know, can you can you lessen the burden? And you know, we will serve you. We have no problem serving you. Can you just lessen the burden? So he's like, you know what? Give me three days. Let me talk about it. And that's good to get counsel. You know, think about something. Don't make decisions right away. Verse six. And King Rehoboam consorted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father, while yet he was a while yet he while yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? So Rehoboam understood even that you know David had his wise counsel and things of that nature. Rehoboam consulted him. He got counsel from him. The people are saying this, how, how should I respond to them? Okay, so he's asking the old men. You know, the old men supposed to have wisdom. Okay, what do these old men say? Verse seven. And they speak unto him saying, if thou will be a servant unto this people this day and will serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. So if you tell them, you know, you speak nice and kind words to them, you talk to them, okay, I hear what you're saying, you know, I can make it less and everything. He said, they're going to serve you forever. You're good. Okay. So the, the older men gave good counsel. Let's read verse eight and see what happened. But he forsook the counsel of the old men, uh -oh. which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him and which stood before him. You know, this is the same thing that happened nowadays. You know, old men, you think older people don't know and all this stuff. And, you know, I ain't listening to their advice. I'm going to listen to some of my friends, you know, I grew up with. Right. He consulted with the young men and said, you know, what, what, what do y'all say? I heard these old men, but I ain't worried about that. What, what do y'all say? Give me some counsel. All right. Verse nine. And he said unto them, what counsel give ye that we may answer this people whom have spoken to me, saying, make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. Okay, so what, what do y'all think I should say about them saying, lessen the load that my father did? What did the young men say? Read. And the young men that were growing up with him spake unto him, saying, thus shalt thou thus speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, thy father made our, made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thou shalt thou say unto them, my little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. <laughs> All right, so he's saying, listen, you thought my father was bad. You know, them young men like, nah, I tell them I'm going to even be worse. Y'all thought my father was bad? My little finger, like my little pinky, is going to be bigger than his whole loin. So it's going to be nothing compared to what my father was doing. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to really uh, show y'all, you know, that burden. So um, continue on, read verse 11. And now, whereas my father did lay you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. Mm -hmm. My father had chastened you with whips, but I will chasten you with scorpions. So he like, my father was maybe whipping y'all with whips to get y'all working. I'm going to have to chastise y'all with like scorpions. So y'all really going to be working with me. <laughs> Listen to that young counsel, young and dumb. Let this be a lesson for us. All right. Verse 15. Jump down to 15. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people for the cause which was from the Lord, that he might perform his saying, which the Lord spake by Ahijah the Shulamite unto Jeroboam the son of Nebuch. So we understand why this stuff is coming about, right? The Lord already knew this stuff was coming to play. This is why, because he, that's why Jeroboam was, uh, um, I'm sorry, Ahijah the prophet was prophesying, already telling, you know, Jeroboam, listen, you're going to, Solomon's going to lose his kingdom. He's going to, you're going to get 10 tribes. So we just waiting to see how this thing is playing out. But he says, you know, it was already the cause was from the Lord. The Lord is already causing this, um, causing this to happen. Okay. So we just seeing how this play, how this split is playing out. We already know what's going to happen because the Lord can't lie. So how's this thing playing out? Verse 18, jump down to verse 18. Then King Rehoboam sent a drone who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones, that he died. Hmm. Therefore, King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. Y'all see that? Verse 18. Hmm. I want y'all to understand how Israel is. <laughs> it says, King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute. So Rehoboam was like, all right, I want, I want to get my money. I told y'all, my father, you know, he worked y'all, I'm going to work y'all more. I want my tribute. 
It says all Israel stoned him with stones. That's a big thing to stone stone a, um, somebody that's collecting for the king. What's that saying? We ain't listening to the king. He ain't over to us. That he died. And it says, therefore, King Rehoboam, what'd he do? Made speed to get up to his chariot to flee Jerusalem. You know, that that's a scary thing. He's like, I know what I that is. Jet. Uh -huh. He had to get out of there, right? So that's what happened. This is what Israel is. When they don't like what they, they don't like something, they, they gonna make sure. And it caused that man his life, all right? So let's go to uh, chapter 12. We're going to jump down to verse 19 because it's almost a civil war. That's that's war. You know what I mean? You rebelling against the king. It's almost like a civil war about to start up. First Kings chapter 12 and verse 19. So Israel rebelled against the house of David until this day. So they were, you know, until this day. So it was a beef going on. You want to know a real beef? There's no beef <laughs> bigger than what? Family. <laughs> family, they're one of the strongest things. It's a spiritual thing with family, when it's between family. Sometimes we'll forgive friends and enemies before we forgive family. And this is why um, Christ and some of them was talking about brotherly love, because we were not getting along. We would accept a total stranger and be cool with a total stranger over one of the ones that was from another tribe. Because of this kind of stuff, it was a spiritual oh. thing that was separating us. I want you to understand the spiritual thing that was separating them. All right. So Israel rebelled against the house of David. All right. Read verse 20. And it came to pass when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. So we have Israel after they stoned that tribute, like, you know what? We ain't going under Rehoboam. We're going to find what? Jeroboam. Remember, Jeroboam was one that fled into Egypt. We're going to make him king over all of us. And it said that they all went and followed under, um, under him. The Israel came under them. But it says, not the house of David, but the tribe of Judah only. So he only had what? The tribe of Judah. Why the tribe of Judah stayed with uh, Rehoboam? Because they family. He came from that tribe. Remember, David is Judah. So he st they, they stay together. Like, listen, th 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 we're going to stay together. All right, so Rehoboam had Judah with him, the tribe of Judah with them, but the rest are over there. But we still remember have that one tribe. Remember that he said, you're going to have one tribe I'm going to put with you. So we don't know who that is right now. Verse 22. But the word of God came unto Sh Shelmiah, the man of God, saying. Okay, so what is, what is this happening to this man of God? All right, what is he about to say? Verse 23. Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, hmm. and to the remnant of the people, saying. Hear that? So Rehoboam, speak unto Rehoboam, and unto the king of Judah, because Rehoboam's still what? He's still king of Judah. He still got that tribe. But it says, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin. Ding, 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 ding. We found out that other tribe that was with him. So total of 12 tribes, remember, it's 12 sons. Uh, Jeroboam got 10. Rehoboam, we only knew had Judah. So we had to, where's that other one that God promised? Benjamin's the other one. Okay. So verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not go up nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearken therefore to the word of the Lord and return to the park according to the word of the Lord. So it was about to go down. And the only reason it go down, because God had to send a messenger to Rehoboam and say, ah, don't do this. This was my doing. So go back and return. But they was ready to fight. And you will look and think, why would two be going against 10? That don't seem like, why, why the two is aggravating? They about to attack 10, the 10 other tribes. Isn't that, don't it seem like a mismatch? But if you knew Benjamin... Ooh. Right tribe with him. <laughs> Benjamin, <laughs> Benjamin fought them all by himself. So that's right. <laughs> and, and, but I'm not gonna go into that. But listen, he had the right tribe with him. If it wasn't if it was any other tribe, I would say it's foolish. But with the Benjamin, <laughs> ooh, it, it was it might have been even. But I'm gonna show you why. Read uh this in Judges 2016. You can read off that's the wolves there. <laughs> <laughs> Among all this people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed 
everyone could sling stones at a hair brethren and not miss. I just want to show you the caliber of the Benjamites, their chosen men. This is when they was fighting against all of Israel. And they beat up Israel, I think, two times. <laughs> the Lord had to intervene and help the other tribes. Benjamin is nothing to play with. This is how accurate these 700 chosen men were. It said they could sling a stone at a hair's breadth. So you know how we got hair? It's saying they can sling, they can throw a stone and they can hit their target as long as it's about a hair's breadth. That's accurate. So these brothers, <laughs> we had some warriors. Don't make it seem like tribe, you know, these uh, children of Israel, which is all, you know, soft people and all that stuff. They were stoned and they're doing all that stuff. And they had some warriors and some fighters. So Benjamin, they were the truth. And like I said, Judah had the right partner with them. That's why Israel wasn't going to just go in there and try to attack uh, Rehoboam with Judah and Benjamin, because Benjamin, they're ready for, for war and for blood, all right? Brother or not, okay? So we see one kingdom split into two, all right? So even though they're all Israel, and this is why I want to make sure everybody knows, they were all Israel. This is a family thing. They were all Israel. We have the house of Israel. They're referred to as the, North King, the Northern Kingdom, the Kingdom of Israel, or, and the, their king is Jeroboam, okay? Their king is Jeroboam, and they can be referred to in the Bible as the Northern Kingdom or the Kingdom of Israel, or the house, um, house of Israel as well. These are the tribes. Remember, we read the brothers in Genesis. These are the tribes that are with the house of Israel. The 10, remember, he ripped it up in 10 pieces. Reuben, Simeon, and Levi, which is the priesthood. It's going to be important. Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, Joseph. Joseph had two sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, and sometimes you will see their names um, in the Bible as well, but it's still, it's still part of that house of Israel, okay? So they split up. One kept the name, all right? So the house of Israel, Jeroboam, have that one, but they split in two kingdoms. So it's the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Judah. They're all Israelites. So the house of Judah is referred to sometimes as the southern kingdom, and I'm going to show you the map in a little bit. Um, the kingdom of Judah, and the king over them was Rehoboam, all right? So that was David's, um, I mean, that's Solomon's son. He was over the house of Judah. So now, since they have this, you know, they're at odds. We have house of Israel. Now we have to get different names so you know the difference. House of Israel, house of Judah, or kingdom of Israel, kingdom of Judah, all right? But they're all Israel. They're all still the um, same people, all right? And who did they have? They only had Judah and Benjamin, okay? And we say for now, they only had Judah and Benjamin. And one thing when we read, um, some people from the tribes mixed, okay? So it's not saying every single individual person from Judah stayed in the house of Judah. There were some that um, could have been with the house of Israel as well, just like with some of them, but it was, a, it was few. It wasn't big, it was few, okay? All right, so this is how it's split. So let's go and talk about Levi or Levitical. Um, the Levites, Levitical priesthood. So we go to Second Chronicles, um, chapter eleven. And when you get there, um, brother, if you want to go on the screen, whatever, I'm going to read verse one. So we're going to talk about Levi because this is another important factor. All right, and this is important definitely when we get to the New Testament. Um, and I'm going to show you some stuff with that. But all these things is important. So Second Corinthians, I mean Second Chronicles, chapter eleven and verse one. Um, brother, when you get there, you can read it. And when Jeroboam was come to Jerusalem, he gathered of the house of Judah and Benjamin a hundred. I'm sorry. You said Jeroboam. You said Rehoboam. No, I'm sorry. And when Rehoboam was come to, to Jerusalem, he gathered out of the house of Judah and Benjamin a hundred and four score thousand chosen men, which were warriors, to fight against Israel, that he might bring the kingdom against again to Rehoboam. All right. So... When you go to different books and everything, sometimes they have the same story. Sometimes you'll get a little different emphasis. So I showed this to show, remember they was about to have that fight? This is the same thing. It's just in a different spot, all right? So don't pay. They weren't about to fight again. This is just the same thing, but it's important. Jump down to verse four. Thus saith the Lord, ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren. Return mm -hmm. every man to his house, for this thing is done of me. And they obeyed the words of the Lord. All right, remember we just we going against Jeroboam. Remember, we just read that, and he said, What? 
Don't fight against your brethren. This is a family battle. These two households, there, it's a family battle. All right, because this thing, excuse me, is done of me. Verse five. And Rehoboam dwelt in Jerusalem and built cities for defense in Judah. All right, so Rehoboam, you know, he's building his defenses. All right, so let's jump down to verse 13. Because we got to talk about these Levi. What the Levi joins Judah? Hmm. Second Chronicles 11, verse 13. And the priests and the Levites that were in all Israel resorted to him out of all their coasts. So the priests and the Levites, now they're leaving Israel. Remember, they was in the house of Israel with Jeroboam, and now they're going to the coast. Read verse 14. Why is this? For the Levites left their suburbs and their possessions and came to Ju Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had cast them all from ex executing the priest's office unto the Lord. So Levi left their, you know, what they had with the house of Israel, with, uh, with Jeroboam, and they came to what? Judah and Jerusalem. Because what? They didn't just leave just to leave. Because Jeroboam and his sons cast them off from what? Performing the priest's office. Levites was ordained from God to perform the priest's office. You cannot replace them, right? But Jeroboam, now he got high money and he replaced them, him and his sons. Why? Read verse 15. And he ordained him priests for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. See, so he ordained his own people. And you still got people like that. Ain't sent from God. You, they just ordaining them, all right? This ain't nothing new, all right? So he took upon himself to make his own priests because what? For his high places, his little tabernacles and sanctuaries and for devils and calves, which he had made, all right? So what they started doing? That's idol worship, all right? So he made his own priests so he could perform his idol worship, okay? So he broke, he's breaking that the command that God said. He said, I'll make you a sure house if you keep my commandments and statutes. I'll make you a sure house. But he's doing the same thing even Solomon was doing, okay? But at least he didn't replace the priesthood, but this guy replaced the priesthood. Verse 16. And after them, out of all the tribes of Israel, such as set their hearts to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice unto the Lord God of their fathers. Y'all see that? So this is why I want to make sure. Because some people say, oh, well, it was just Judah. It was. They're the main three. Okay. When you think of Jews, we're going to get to that one. Or the house of Judah, it's those three tribes now. But some people that was uh, meant to seek the Lord, they wanted to seek the Lord, they know they had to go to Jerusalem and they need to sacrifice. You have to get the, do your sacrifice and everything. You need the Levitical priesthood. So anybody that was meaning to do good had to go to Judah to do that stuff now because the Levites not there. They're not at the house of Israel. So they had to go there. Okay. So there was other people from some of the other tribes that will come and they'll fall back when they was, you know, trying to do good. All right. And serve the Lord. Okay. All right. So now, now we're going to update it. We got the house of Israel, which uh, Jeroboam's in charge of, Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, Asher, Issachar, Zebulon, you know, Ephraim, Manasseh. And now we got the house of Judah. And now they got added what? Levi. So now this is what it looks like. House of Israel got these tribes over here. And then the house of Judah have what? Now they added Levi, the priesthood to them. All right, and that's a, if you understand it, that's some symbolic that what God is with them, right? Because He had this is the people that you needed to do the performances, right? They, they were set in order. If you go to, um, I think Hebrews talked about, He put them in place for men, right? To give gifts and sacrifices and everything for sins. So it was very important that what Levi came to Judah. All right, and that's why He's saying He didn't forsake them. Remember, God had a couple of things He put out that He was going to do. Remember, he said, for David's sake, I'm not going to forsake them. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to, you know, destroy them. I won't have them set, all right? Because I already made that promise to David, all right? So Levi is with Benjamin and Judah, all right? So we got the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Sorry, the arrows switched it up. But remember, I talked about which one, the northern and the southern. We see the southern kingdom. They have Judah, Benjamin, Levi. And then the house of Israel, northern kingdom, has the rest of the sons, okay? And you see... You know how it's set up, but they're all what Israelites. They all can be referred as Israelites, but if you want to be specific to what's what, this is how you look at it. Okay. All right. 
So I'm gonna give, I don't know if y'all can see it, it's very small, I apologize. So I don't even know if you can see my arrow. So these are the kings. I'm making a comparison of the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah, right? The Bible tells which one was serving God and not serving God. So if you can look at this chart, on the right, where you see this blue, uh, the blue, it says Israel, 10 northern tribes, and their capital was Samaria at that time, okay? So when you go to these kings, the red means the ones that were what? Wicked or bad. Look at this kingdom mm -hmm. and the house of Israel. You just see all red, don't you? It's all red. They were wicked. Remember, he started doing them idols and everything. They just stayed wicked. If you can see the left, you see the red, the red up top. It says Judah and Benjamin. Capital is Jerusalem, right? And you look at that, you see red, red, so bad, bad, you know, Rehoboam was bad, son of Baja was bad, and then you have Asa, Jehovah's fat, you got some good ones, then you got some bad, then you got some good ones, then you got some bad, you got an okay one, you know, so it's a mixed one. So with the house of Judah, Solomon and David's house that he came from, they was doing good and bad throughout their, their uh, time, they were doing good and bad, okay? Now Israel, when Rehoboam took the 10 tribes and all that, he just, they were just doing wicked. They was bad, 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 okay? So just showing you um, just a chart just in case you wanted to see it. I'm gonna show you another one. If you can see it on this one, might be a little clear, a little better. The left side is Israel. The orange, the smiley faces is bad. That mean, you know, it was a wicked king, right? Israel had what? All oranges. They were doing all bad ones. But the house of Judah, you see some orange ones, but you see some yellow ones, meaning these people were serving God. So you'll have that back and forth, good and bad, good and bad, good and bad, all right? So I just wanna show you, this is very important. The house of Israel, they were doing wicked. All this, the whole time they're doing wicked, but Judah will go good and go back and forth, good and bad, okay? Very important. And I'm gonna show you this because this is very important. Definitely we're understanding some things. So we go to Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse five, we'll read five and six because it says the house of Israel. And this is something that I, I learned later on, you know, reading, I ran across some of this stuff as well. All right, the house of Israel, Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse five, Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse five. And that may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Strange, they are what? Almost separated from me. How they get separated from God? Because they're doing this idol worship. They're going against the commandments, right? When you do the idol worship, everything, you separate from God. God, you can't have God dwelling with the idols and all that stuff. No, he's a jealous God. He's not playing that. So the house of Israel, he said, they've been taken away with these idols, you know? So remember, I showed you all those sad faces because what? They was doing idolatry. They was doing things like the other nations were doing. Verse six. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, Mm -hmm. Thus saith the Lord God, repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. So try to tell them, turn from your idols, turn from your abominations, okay? And even though this was given, it was told to the house of Israel, it was still talking about the house of Judah because they would mess up too, okay? Both, uh, both sides, both kingdoms were messing up. One was just, you know, they would, they would repent, you know, get back with God, then they'll, somebody will mess it up, then they'll come back. So they both was, you know, messing up at a time. But listen to Hosea chapter one and verse six. Catch what this is saying. Read. And she, and she conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, call her name Laruhamah, for I would no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. So this is a prophecy about Hosea. So Hosea talked to the house of Israel. This is this is dealing with the house of Israel now, okay? Those, those uh, nine, 10 tribes. It says, God said, call her name Larumah. What does that mean? I will no more, listen to this. I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. If he don't have mercy upon the house, and that's the kingdom, right? If he didn't have no more mercy upon the kingdom, that means what? He's not protecting them. And what's going to happen? But I will utterly, listen to the language, take them away. 
What has he taken away from? From him. Because what he tell Rehoboam, if you do my laws and statutes and commandments, I'll make you a sure house. A sure house, what? Don't go nowhere. But this kingdom is going to be what? Taken away. They're taken away from God, so where are they going to go? You have to be what? Mixed in with the world. Other words, you're being scattered. That, that word is going to be very important when we get keep going. So this is where it's prophesied. The house of Israel is going to be taken away, utterly taken away. Okay? But I want you to read verse 7, because I'm going to show you this, both, talking about both kingdoms. But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, mm. and will save them by the Lord their God, mm -hmm. and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. So the house of Israel, he's not going to have mercy. Even they was acting up. He, he said, I'm not going to have mercy. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy this house. And you'll see the house of Israel, they disperse. They don't have that when you get to a certain point in the Bible. But he said, the house of Judah, it ain't that y'all were good, but I just had mercy. They said, I just forgive y'all. So this is why the house of Judah stays together. Mm -hmm. You see that the house of Judah, you'll hear Judah and Jews, they stayed together throughout it because what? God had mercy on that house. But the other house, the other kingdom, he didn't have mercy on. He what? Destroyed that house. When you destroy a house, where you have to go? You have to find somewhere to live. You have to go somewhere else. And that's what the house of Israel is. They got scattered. They had to go somewhere else. But the house of Judah, he had mercy on them. Okay. Now, let's keep going. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 36 and verse 14. We're going to talk about now. This is talking about the house of Judah. I'm going to show you that they weren't good either. It was just because of the Lord's mercy that they were not consumed. That's it. That's why you shouldn't boast. It was only the Lord's mercy. 36 and verse 14. When you get there, brother, read it. Moreover, all the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen mm -hmm. and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. So, you know, the priests and all them, even the one, and like I said, Judah was acting up too. So this prophet was talking basically to both houses, but um, we'll keep going. What's verse 15? And the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up, be, rising up be times and sending, because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. All right. So he said, I sent the fathers, you know, I sent messengers, you know, because I want to have compassion on them. When God is sending uh, preachers and men of God and, you know, some of the sisters y'all present them, it's because God is loving you. He's trying to tell you, you know, I love you. Get, get back to the commandments. Get back to these statues. Some people see it as a bad thing, but no, it's actually God's mercy and love he's trying to have on you. He said, I did it for compassion, okay, because he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place, which we talk about is what? Jerusalem, okay? Verse 16. But they mocked the messengers of God mm -hmm. and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. So this is what happened. You start rejecting the, uh, the prophets and all that and you start mocking them. You know, the Lord going to get angry. And he said, till there was no remedy. There was no medicine. So the only reason Judah got spared is because he said, what, I'll have mercy. But the house of Israel didn't get that mercy. So they really literally didn't have no remedy, nothing to help them. Okay. So we go to Ezra 1.1. One, one. We're going to still talk about, we're going to talk about this house of Judah. So that last place I went to, they, would, they got into captivity with Nebuchadnezzar. Okay. So we got into captivity as together, the, one, the house of Judah. Um, and, and now this is talking about the next um, person that took over, Ezra um, chapter one and verse one. Now, in the first year of Cyprus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyprus, king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying. So we got this king, um, Cyrus, the king of Persia, all right? So who stirred up his spirit in him? The Lord stirred up his spirit because the Lord still had some things he had to do. Sometimes he'll stir up people's spirit, okay? Verse two. Thus saith, the, thus saith Cyprus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven had given me all the kingdoms of the earth 
and have charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Ju Judah. And you keep saying Cyprus, but Cyrus. Uh, <laughs> it's all right. Uh, Cyrus, the king of Persia. Um, so he's saying, you know, the God of heaven, we only know, we know it's only one God, right? Give me all the kingdom of the earth, right? And he have charged me to build him a house where? At Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Why, why would the spirit be telling him to do that and moving him to do that? Because he already made that promise that I'm going to keep the house of Judah. He said, for my David's sake and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. All right. So this king don't even know he, he's fulfilling prophecy that was old. All right. Verse three. Who is there among you all of his people? Mm -hmm. His God be with him and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. He said, who is there among you of all his people? Like, who's his, who's God's people? Where are you at? All right, like, who's going to go and build this house for the, for the most high? All right, verse five. Listen. Then rose up the chief of the, of the fathers of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites mm -hmm. with all of them whose spirit God had raised to go up to build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. You see, I got very specific. Mm -hmm. The fathers, you know, these are the chief people. You know, where they go, that's where majority of people go. The fathers of Judah, Benjamin, and then the priests and the Levites. Priests, which are Levites, right? So remember those three tribes is talking about three of them. And then it says, with all them whose spirit God have raised. Remember, some of them went that wanted to serve the Lord. So sometimes we had some other ones that come. But as the tribes as a whole, it was only these three tribes mainly. I want y'all to catch this is very important because when we go to New Testament, that's why it's always signifying these things, okay? So this house of Judah. Now let's go to Ezra, go to chapter four and read one verse. Ezra chapter four and one verse. Verse 12, chapter four and verse 12. Be it known unto the king that the Jews which came up from thee to us are come unto Jerusalem, build, building the rebellious and the bad city and have set up the walls thereof and joined the foundations. We can go into that story, but they was trying to stop them from building, whatever. But what did he refer them to? Be it known unto the, to the king that the Jews, who were being referred to as the Jews at that time, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, that house of Judah. So this is what Jews were. That's a small fraction of Israel. It's not all of Israel. Jews was a, a fraction of them, okay? Those tribes, the house of Judah. Okay, so that's one thing we need to realize when we get in moving forward. So examples of Judah, Benjamin, you can just read off here because we're going to a couple different spots. So I'm just giving you examples of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, because these ones are referred to as Jews. And we go to New Testament, it says Jews, 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 and we're going to realize there's still those tribes, you know, dealing with them. So um, Romans 11, verse 1. I say then, have God cast away his people? Mm -hmm. God forbid. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So this is Paul. Everybody loves Paul. Paul says what? I'm an Israelite. I'm from the children of Israel. How is that? He tells you we came from the seed of Abraham and what? I came from the brother Benjamin. Who else was from the tribe of Benjamin? Oh, the first king of Israel, Saul. And what was his name? Paul's name was what? Saul, because they will name people after people in their lineage. So he was Saul, changed his name to Paul. So Saul was from the tribe of Benjamin. And what? Benjamites is what? He referred to as a Jew too, because what? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. They were all referred to as Jews at times. Okay. Matthews 8, 4. And Jesus said unto him, see that tell no man, see that I'll tell no man, but go thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Remember with Ezra, it was Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and he had the priest with them, right? We, now we got the priest. Let's see if they got Levites. Leave uh, John 1 and 19. This is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? So Jews. The Jews sent priests and Levites because they were with them, okay? I ain't spent all that time just showing you some examples in case you want to see it, but there's more. Matthew 2, 2. 
saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? Mm -hmm. For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. So the king of the Jews will what? He will probably be born with his people, right? Judah. Let's see what tribe he's from. Hebrews 7, 14. What tribe is Jesus from? For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, mm. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, which would make him what? A rightful heir to the king. <laughs> so it's it's all in order all right it's all in order so these are some examples of judah benjamin and levi so when they talk about the new testament it's usually um from these three okay so now we're going to go we're going to get a little deeper in water hopefully you know don't lose too many people we're going to get a little deeper i'm warning you you know but i'll try i try to break it down as simple as possible we're almost at the end all right, so what about the house of Israel? Because now I just told you, you know, it told you Ezra, he left, and you got Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, right? And so we got the Jews there. So what about the house of Israel? Where are they at, right? Because God said also that he ain't going to destroy them, you know, forever, and we'll get to that, all right? So they have to be somewhere. They're not with their brothers, those three tribes, but where are they at? So read Jeremiah 50 and verse 6. I have to establish this point first. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Mm -hmm. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. So, uh, you want to go naturally? Naturally, the resting spot is where? Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. This is where we have rest. This is where you say you go there to Sabbath. That's their land. That's the land. All right. So their natural resting place, they weren't at, were they? The Jews were there, but other tribes weren't there spiritually we have resting place what in our god they weren't doing what's right so he wasn't getting they weren't resting right so my people have been lost sheep okay my people have been lost sheep and i want you to understand it because now there's certain things that christ was um talking about that was not referring to everybody it's something very specific in the scriptures now, when some people get all emotional and not saying that God don't deal with other people and that you can't get in and all that. I'm not saying that. I just want y'all to get understanding of what is actually going on. It's very deep what Christ was doing. All right. So John 10 and verse 15. As the father knoweth me, even so know I the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So we established in Jeremiah 56, my people have been lost sheep. You can look in the Old Testament, there's a lot of spots that saying his people refer to as sheep. So my people have been lost sheep. As the Father knoweth me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. He's the shepherd. Lay my life down for the sheep. Read verse 16. As other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Very important. I have other sheep, and we're gonna it's gonna be on the next slide, I believe. But there's other sheep, so there's other people. He said, not this fold. They're gonna be one fold and one shepherd. Let me see if I put on here. Yes. So these are the key things. Other sheep, this fold, I must bring. It's very important that he said, I must bring one fold and one shepherd. Okay. So I'm gonna bring you back to Hosea because I read two verses in there. We talked about he'll have mercy on one and no mercy on the other. But there's other stuff in that Isaiah as well. I mean, in Hosea. So Hosea um, chapter one and verse 10, right? He had mercy on Judah, so they're still there. They're, they was good. So one and verse 10, read that for yet the, number, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered, and it shall come to pass that in a place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. Why is this important? Because remember when they was going to Jerusalem, they, they was getting, you know, they was trying to do census and stuff on them. You could account all the Jews. You can get an account if they on that spot, you can get a count of how many is in there. But what? This one's saying the children of Israel, they cannot be measured because they all weren't in Jerusalem. 
there was the the other tribes that were what? scattered, right? I'm going to utterly destroy them. So they're scattered. They dispersed. We're going to see that later on. Hosea 1.11, read the next verse. Very important. Listen to this, y'all. Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Some of the stuff is still in motion, too. I, I, I will say that. But look what it says. Then shall the children of Judah, that's the one house, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, the Jews, and the children of Israel, the rest of the tribes, be gathered together. That mean what? They're not together, right? And appoint them one head. Mm -hmm. Remember John 10, 16, when you read up, one shepherd. Who's the head of the sheep? A shepherd, right? So this is what, when Christ was coming and doing some of these things, saying, I got to bring them back. Remember, and the reason he used fold, I want you to realize what a fold is. If you have a piece of paper and you fold it and then you unfold it, you have a crease, right? You got one half, you got another half. Oh. He came to Israel, when he folds them, he has what? A house of Judah, house of Israel. I have sheep that are not of this fold. Who was the fold he was dealing with? He was in Jerusalem, who was there? The Jews. I got sheep of another fold. He still got those other ones he gotta, he gotta bring back. Because what? He said, the children of Israel and the children of Judah gotta be gathered together. It was only one that was gathered together. The rest were what? Spread out. So it's, it's, it's very precise that he's, he's telling us these stuff right here. It's not for no reason he's saying he uses shepherd and sheep. It's, to, it's so that we can understand it. All right? That's right. Remember, he, he always spoke in parables. That's why, you know, it's not as clear to some people. All right? So Matthew 15 and verse 24. All right? Matthew 15 and verse 24 is another one. The answer is said, I am not sent, but unto the law sheep of the house of Israel. So now he, he just makes it plain. He's telling you who the law sheep was, the house of Israel. Now we know who the house of Israel was, because we talked and established that, right? Those tribes refer to the house of Israel, literally. Okay, so he said, I'm sent to them. Because what? We know how Hosea, he's supposed to gather them together. Now we go to John 7.35. I'm going to see if y'all can catch this. Then said the Jews among themselves, whither will he go, that we shall not find him? Will he go unto the disperse among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? Will he go to the who? The disperse. Where would the disperse that? Among the Gentiles. Among the, they're, 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 they're among them. Mm -hmm. who, what does disperse mean? Disperse mean we were somewhere together and then what? It got spread out. Yep. It got scattered. Because we they knew what? They knew Jesus saying, he already said that what? I come to the, the law sheep of the house of Israel. I'm only dealing with the law sheep. He already said that, right? So if he's um, leaving us Jews, he's leaving Judah, and he's going somewhere else where we're not at, who would be the only factor that he can go to? The house of Israel. Because he said he's dealing with the law sheep. That's why they're saying, who's he going to go to the dispersed? Why they say dispersed among the Gentiles? Not just say, who's going to go out to the world and other places? No, they still know he said that he's going to deal with the lost sheep. So he's like, what are you going to do? Go to the other tribes that's dispersed with the Gentiles? And we ain't going to go into all that today. See, some people are looking at each other. We're not going to go on deep, too deep with that today. But all right. So James chapter 1 and verse 1. Read that, because we're talking about this dispersed. Why say the dispersed among the Gentiles? Who got dispersed? James, a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. Scattered abroad. Isn't scattered the same as being dispersed? Why were they lost? Because Jerusalem is his resting place, his house. He said, I always hear here. They're not in Jerusalem. Who's at Jerusalem? The Jews. That was Judah, Benjamin, Levi. The other tribes are where? Somewhere else. They're not home. When somebody's not home, they can be referred to as what? Lost. Because the sheep, if you have sheep or goat, they don't go so far. 
They're going to stay close to their shepherd, the safety. But these ones, what? They got utterly destroyed. And when they got destroyed as a kingdom, they didn't fall back to their brothers, the Jews. They what? They went out amongst the other nations. They get mixed up with them. Right. Dispersed among the Gentiles. Are what? Still Israel. Scattered abroad. Okay, so we everywhere because what? We're supposed to be like the same of the sea. All right? So I'm going to read. This is going to be, um, I think, the last part. This is very important. I think a lot of people don't understand this last couple of verses. This is going to be a John 11. Mike, 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 real quick. Um, the dispersion is Israel, but then in James it says the 12 tribes that were scattered. Yeah. So yes. I thought it was the... It can... So it Judah, can was the Judah together? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Remember... When I said that people came, that's a, I'm glad you made the point up. When they came, remember there were some people that went with Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that was that hearts were right to do serve the Lord. So you had some people that come from them tribes. Also, there's some people that what from Judah, Benjamin, and Levi that stayed with the house of Israel or stayed with the dispersed. So it was still accurate. It wasn't every single person. So yes, yeah, all tribes were scattered abroad, and that's why he said. Uh, where are you going to go? You're going to go to the dispersed among the, you're going to go to the, the ones that's already dispersed with the Gentiles because what? They will still be referred to as the house of Israel because uh -huh. with them. All right. Great question. Great question. All right. So this is the, um, it's going to be the last part. So John 11 and verse 47, we're going to read through here. And I want to see if y'all can pick this stuff up. All right. Like I said, I ain't going to go into the whole house of Israel uh, stuff um, today, but for this lesson's sake, this is going to kind of be none of it. So 11 verse 47, read. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees at council and said, what do we? For this man doeth many miracles. So the chief priests and the Pharisees, you know, the Jews coming together, like, what are we going to do with this man? He does a lot of miracles. All right, read verse 48. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. Mm -hmm. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. Who's speaking? The Jews. The Jews. Oh. Mm -hmm. saying if we don't stop this stuff, everybody's going to believe in this Jesus and Rome, the Romans going to take our place, which we have, and our nation. They don't want the Jews. It's very important because you're going to see why. All right. Verse 49. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, you know nothing at all. <laughs> so Caiaphas getting up like, oh, mm -hmm. the high priest, y'all don't know nothing. You know, y'all know nothing. Why? Verse 50. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man shall die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. Y'all don't know that it's better that <laughs> this one man die that we, you know, he be killed than the whole nation perish? That sounds fair. Okay. Now here's what, it, here's what it, I'm sorry. Read verse 51. So he's saying it's better this one man die than what? Us Jews, we lose our nation and our, our, our place, you know? So read verse 51, last two verses, y'all. And this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. So he's saying, you know what? This wasn't of him, but he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Talking about the Jews, right? The house of Judah. Listen to this part, very important. Last verse. And not for that nation only, mm. but but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. So what? Not for us only. Not for that nation only. Not for the Jews only. Not for us just here. But that he should gather together. Remember, spread across, gather together in one, in one, because it's one fold. He didn't take it from a different fold, from one fold, the children of God. Not everybody, the children of God that were what? Scattered abroad. Right. Very important. Who was scattered? Who was dispersed? You can't get around that part. Somebody was scattered. He's talking about a certain thing. It's not for the nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. This brother was sent for that to gather together the ones that were scattered. You can't go with anybody else because when you say scattered, that means you were together at one point. There's only one person that's scattered from the rest. From He's in the Jews. 
<laughs> you know, we, we that nation. He died for the nation. It's better that he died for the nation and not for that nation only, but he should gather together in one because what we read before, it should be one shepherd and it should be over who? The house of Israel, the house of Judah. Come. In the house of Israel, scattered and dispersed because they were utterly destroyed. But Jesus even died for them to what? So he could bring them all back. Okay, because right. the covenant, they broke the covenant with God. They started doing idol worshiping. They got scattered abroad. But even though they did that, Jesus still had to collect them back as well. They couldn't save themselves. He had to collect them back. All right. So with that, I'll say Shalom. <laughs> Yeah.